Hello and welcome. Welcome to those of you who are dropping in to see the Stitching Owl for the first time. Thank you to those subscribers who just joined us in the last couple of weeks. I see there's a number of you and I am glad that you came today. And to those of you who have been watching regularly, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You are part of my stitchy family that makes this whole experience so peaceful and happy for me. Now today is not my typical stitching owl. This is a month with five Sundays. And my plan is to do my regular floss tubes on the first and third Sunday of a month. So in those situations where there's a fifth Sunday to work around, I'm going to plan something a little bit different than typical. And that is how we came to today's whip and finish parade. So I'm not sure how long this is going to take people. Every time I thought, oh, I've got it all, I realized, no, I didn't. And yes. So I am going on scripted again uh, with little post-it notes on those items that I can actually put a name on. I have my youngest, Derica, who will be um, making notes for me so that I can more adeptly uh, edit this later, as well as taking things away so that I don't end up with such a mess here that I have no idea how to undo what I've just done. So with that, what I want to do is to make two basic announcements, but the rest of this time is not going to be my typical uh, announce this and that. So the first thing that I want to announce is that the gratitude gathering for Friend Stitch 2024 has its registration right now. It will be taking place on September the 21st and is a virtual retreat. So it is not run by Lindy Stitches, so it will not feel like the Jingle Ball and the Superb Owl. However, it has happened in the past and people have been absolutely thrilled. So check out Friend Stitch and see whether you might join me in going to that online retreat in September. And the only other thing that I wanted to show today um, is actually a CD. And I realize that many of you do not have anything to play CDs in. What do they call the thing that your dad played it in? A CD drive. Oh, look at that. Okay, there's something called a CD drive. And what my husband did was took the CD out of this particular ornaments. So this is just cross stitch ornaments, the Christmas special magazine from 1997 to 2013. So that is like 15 or 16 years of ornaments. And I know he hooked me up the other day and I started going through these magazines thinking, first of all, Amy, you need to get this, Renewing Stitches. It's, bit, it's fascinating to actually just watch the evolution of things, uh, even the advertisements. But um, there are so many exquisite Christmas ornaments in these older magazines that um, this was a really good deal. It should have cost a lot of money and on Amazon, it was a completely easy purchase. So there we go. And we are going to start our day today with whips, my works in progress. And we'll hope that I've got things stacked up appropriately. Apologize for anything that isn't quite right. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to say is in the past couple of weeks, I had a start and I started one of the new releases of Tiny Towns called More Any Tiny Town. So this was just uh, released at Nashville and was popped along to me. I am using this as um, 
So I'm using it for the Magazine Monthly Challenge where the theme is bird's eye view. I feel like if a bird is flying, they would be looking at all these houses as being little and that makes that fit. So in the three days of stitching that I have, I have the market without me putting market in here. What I'm going to do is to take regular thread for my sewing machine and use that because I am already doing this in only one strand because this is sulky thread. This is on 32 count prehistoric linen by Fox and Rabbit with 12 weight sulky thread, which means I'm taking cues about my colors from this, but I'm not necessarily feeling like I have to match everything super precisely. It's a tiny town after all. And one of the reasons that they put out this one was for us to actually personalize this to make it look like our town. All right, so that's my first one. And my second one, I do not have an overall picture for you. Uh, I'm finding that sometimes the, um, when you download something from Etsy, that you can't always get a really good shot of what the picture is supposed to be. Sometimes it has the little icon that you can see in Pattern Keeper and then it goes directly into the pattern. So this is the Garden Gnome and I'm just gonna take, yes, I've put post-it notes on things. I did not do a lot of notes, but I wanted to know what I was talking about. So this is the Garden Gnome. It is a Nenny design and uh, they are on Etsy. At the present time, you really can't see much gnome going on but you can see the garden going on because we've got flower on both sides and this white is the gnome's beard. So I am using this for two different prompts in Laura Stitching by the Shores um, monthly I Spy. And so what she uh, had here is something green. So I'm making sure that I have a nice shamrocky green uh, coat for my gnome and something for spring. Planting a garden is definitely uh, something for spring for me. So we've got the pup in the room. Um, so this has been very helpful. So this is a um, 20 count cornflower Ada by Fiber on the Wilm. And right now I'm at 1,525 stitches, which is 31%. So I'm almost at the one third point. And I'll hand that off and then I will write. So every so often I will be writing down who I have mentioned so that I know how to reference the floss tuber who has come up whilst I'm just chatting with you. Now the next thing I have here is something by Ink Circles called Wildberry, but I have to admit this is just a grand experiment. I want to be part of the Hathaway Stitcher, Stitchers Mystery Stitch where we all get the same pattern, but we're not to reveal what, what uh, fabric we've used or what the colorations are. And so I thought, you know, I want to actually do something that's a bit of just a throw caution to the wind. But also, I needed an eye for in hot air balloon for my magazine monthly challenge. And this is by Ink Circles. So this is getting close to being about a quarter of the shape. And let's see, what am I doing here? This is a Pell Stitch Design 32 count Lugana fabric, but I lost the tag on it and thus don't know the exact color. I am using two strands of over dyed floss from Stash. And so it is definitely a mix of whatever I had that I thought I had enough of. So one of the things I'm trying to discover is how do I not just get stripes or blobs of color when I'm working with a variegated floss. 
So I don't know what this one will end up being ultimately, but for right now, um, I'm having fun just sort of playing around with things. And I mentioned the Hathaway stitchers. So they are new, but lots of fun. And my next whip is actually going to be a modern folk embroidery, uh, Carmen of Cardamom Pins, um, who has a lovely presence on both Instagram and FlossTube. And I had the joy of actually meeting her at Jacob Palooza. So um, she is a true modern folk embroidery fan. And so she wanted to encourage, encourage us in 2024 to pick something by Jacob that might not be what is the one that's being stitched by everyone right now. Zoop to his older patterns and see if there's something you haven't seen other people stitch. And this is called hashtag Jacob Sleeper Sal. And so what I have done is I've picked the peacock tree. And this is originally monochromatic. And I think that Sarah of So Me Sarah is doing this, but as a monochromatic. I am going to be using three colors. These are Roxy Floss Co colors. This, this turquoise here, oh my word, is so gorgeous. And then I've got this lightly variegated, so hang on. This is called, and I love how they name their flosses, Teal My Heart. And this one is grassy, and this one is graphite. And I think I'm gonna use the graphite for the legs of the peacock because I don't want to add yet another color. So I'm truly enjoying this. If you have never tried a modern folk embroidery, honestly, this is the easiest one to count. You can do it in one color, two colors, three colors. And if you did it perhaps on something like eight o'clock, it would be done in no time at all. So at this point, I have 1,196 stitches in, which is 26.4%. So notice that Jacob's um, patterns slip nicely into Pattern Keeper, and that just makes the sewing that much easier for us. Thank you, Derica. And then my next one, well, I thought I was gonna be able to do this without any creakling, but just the way I have the key, I have joined Elizabeth of Elizabeth Savory. And so Savory Sewing is really who Elizabeth is and she recently had a birthday. And she decided she was going to start more than one pattern on her birthday, but she, like me, is a lover of owls, so one of them needed to be a, an owl. And so I have joined her in stitching Una Owl by the Artsy Housewife. This is the cutest thing. Now, I have a Roxy Floss Co. conversion. So I've got this little piece of paper, which was what was originally in front of the owl, that tells me what symbols go to which um, floss. So, so far, I've got about 300 stitches in here. This is the side of the owl. So, um, this is 20 count Mint Ada by Fiber on a Whim. Now, you, there are more than one sows going on right now that this is applicable to. This certainly can be the Una Owl B-Day Sow. And then I would suggest actually, if you're going to use that one, tag Savory Sewing as well. But there's also the Artsy Fartsy Sal, 
where we are just celebrating one of our newer designers who has come onto the market with so many fabulous, fabulous uh, patterns, and that is the Artsy Housewife. Uh, she also has a floss tube, so well worth uh, getting to know. This is fun, and I am using one strand of Roxy floss, and in that way, I'm going to have half of the kit that they gave me left over for other stitching fun. Okay. And so that was the artsy housewife. Okay, yes. Thank you so much, Dee. Now another whip that I have, if you've been going along with me for a while, you know that I am a fan, a fan, a fan, oh my word, of Amy of Renewing Stitches. And one of the things that she wanted to encourage people to do was to embrace the songbirds in the cottage garden sampling um, offerings. Now they did have a specific year that was called the songbird year, but they have other patterns that fit into this and she's so generous, she doesn't care, just have fun. And she was just thinking of the, do you want to build a snowman song and came up with the sal, hashtag, do you want to stitch a songbird? So I have been doing this one, which is Have Faith, and I'm on my second iteration. I started the first one on a 32 count and started with the border and I got a little bogged down. I wasn't quite ending up with the picture that I wanted. And so I, of course, never miss one of Contented Needleworker Kim's uh, floss tube. And she reminded me, you can always just do the part you want to do. So I just set aside that first piece of material. I'll use it for something else. And I started this on cloud. It's a 20 count Ada, so it will be smaller. It is a Roxy Flosco Ada. And so you can see that I've got a couple of the bluebells in. I've got a good chunk of the bird body in. So in the next week, I hope to get the rest of the bird in so I can decide, is this it? With maybe a swoop of something else under here? Or am I going to put more up here? I must admit that I'm very tempted to put a ladybug over here. Just a splash of red, just for fun. I think that that, uh, my mother's always about have a splash of color somewhere. Whether you're making a quilt, a wall hanging, or something like I do with embroidery floss. Now, I believe on this one, I do not have this in Pattern Keeper. I am using the called for DMC one strand per box um, with lots of edit editing as explained. And next I have a fun, fun pattern. Um, Colette the Highway Stitcher and Brenda the Handwork Maniac and Brenda. Every fall, I believe it's every October, they get together at a retreat. And each year they start a new one year project. And so they just pick a pattern and they invite everybody to just join in. Because they meet in October, this is hashtag, hashtag, oh my, oct to oct sal, but it can also be hashtag birdhouse sal. And in case you want to embrace the French, hashtag au fille de nichois sal. Yes, so this is the birdhouses. And we started in October with the October house, which is this one. So this is a finish, but um, not fully finished yet. And then this is November. Lovely, uh, <laughs> I thought it was really funny that all of these leaves had such uh, different colors because usually 
trees pick one color, but nope, not this time. And of course, there was an owl, so I was all in. Um, when we get to some fully finishes, I'm going to show some experimenting with a December and January. And then on this end of the piece of fabric, this guy is February. This guy is March. Oh my, that one daffodil is not coming out very well. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave that like that. And this was the beginning of September. That was something that I started uh, because of Magazine, Magazine Monthly's like roll a dice and see what you get. And that ended up to be the ninth month. And so I started the ninth month. So that's technically the last month for this particular series. And as such, um, I'm ahead a little bit, but not completely. So that was 28 Count Panettone from Roxy Flosco. Yes, you know, I'm a Roxy fan and I'm stitching one over one. That's how those ended up being so tiny. So most people are doing all 12 birdhouses, one for each month in the full picture, but I let Colette know what I wanted and she was ducky with me doing it tiny and as ornaments. So it's so much fun to actually have these opportunities to uh, work with some of the people that we have been watching for years. Now this is also a new start. You have not seen it before. And I'm stitching this guy on 36 Count Billy Jean by Roxy Flosco with uh, one strand of DMC 310. Now, this is one where I do not have a picture to show you. So I'm going to put it up like this. This is called Dragon and it's by JP Cross Stitch Pattern on Etsy. All it's called is Dragon. And you're probably looking at this going that this is the nose and these are the eyes. And then this is going to, nope. This is the nose. These are the nostrils. And while this is going to be 98% black 310, wait to see what you do with the eyes. So this is not a huge piece. You can see I started pretty close to the edge. Um, I just thought that in the year of the dragon, if Laura could have more than one dragon going, so could I, but no, I'm not going to make it a huge dragon. Uh, so there's almost 225 stitches done on this particular and uh, piece, and that would make this eligible for the hashtag year of the dragon sal that has been started by the Huga Stitcher and Fibers and Floss Canada. They are um, best friends for life, living in different provinces, but having a wonderful time hosting a sow. So this feels really strange, doesn't it? Because when I started my um, videos, I did not have this many sows going at once. But I'm having fun. Okay, so this sow, if I say a Vivster Quaker flag, you will know exactly what I'm talking about because the world is a buzz and Vivian Power has made, I don't even know what the last count is. I know it's got to be over 30 flags for the different countries and made them with Quakers. Now, these are fairly significant size charts and each Quaker is over 600 stitches. So it is not going to be a quick fix. And I do believe some people are using this as a leap year sow so that they can have four years to do this. I want to see if I can complete it in one year. So that means uh, February 1 of 2025. Let's see where you are. So I am doing the Canadian flag. And you can see that I've got six of the Quakers completely done and the seventh one I have halfway done so that you can see what the pattern is. 
Each Quaker is individually different on the whole flag. Now I only have a couple more here and I will reach the bottom edge and then I only have like one more here before I go into a white stripe. So by doing this on my 35 count linen that is effervescent but doesn't really show the sparkly bits. No, it's not showing the sparkle very well today. Um, but um, it's going to be smaller than uh, some people's are and you can see I every so often just put a little starting stitch on the next one so that I've got a start. So with this one, I have one strand of sulky thread over uh, two threads of 35 opalescent white linen. Right at the moment, I've got 4,069 stitches, which equals 8.4%. So I'm not far, but I am really pleased with how far I am for it just being about five weeks of work. If I can do one Quaker per week, I should be needing to do two Quakers a week in the summer, otherwise I won't be done in a year. Yeah, we only have 52 weeks in a year, don't we? Mm, math. Okay, and now we have the um, Q Patterns by Maria, Dragon Keeping Time. So this was the main stitch that I have for the hashtag Year of the Dragon Sal. At this point, I have stitched 7,172 stitches and I, I'm at 49%. I could not get it to 50% for today, but I know I will by Sunday, which my goal was to actually hold it right side up. So here we go. So this is a Pell Stitches Lugana that is called Rumble, Rumbling Thunder, and it is 32 count. Um, it is just the nicest stuff to work on and such a perfect background for this particular situation. My hourglass in the center still sort of looks like a champagne glass, but when I get going farther, it will come out as the hourglass that it is you can see I got the back. Okay, D. Do dragons have paws? Feet? Claws. What do they have? Claws? But that's not the whole foot. Like, what do they have? Like, I'm not the only floss tuber has said. What do we call these? A paw, at least to my knowledge, kind of means there's supposed to be a pad on the bottom of it. They don't have that. So you could call them feet, theoretically, but I think they're generally, to my knowledge, just called claws. Well, and they actually do have claws when you actually get in there. Yeah. They're and you predators. can see that he's got his gold starting in. It's, this is just fun. And up here, he's got a village sitting on his back. <laughs> There's just so many treats within this. And it really does stitch fast. Um, and I've said my stats for this guy. So there we go with my other Year of the Dragon cell. And that brings us to my board. So you know I've been stitching Under the Stars by Modern Folk Embroidery. I'm just gonna divide myself. So I'm just going to go in here. You can see that I've got a beautiful Blue Moon 32 count Lugana. This again is one strand of 12 weight sulky thread, but I've chosen a variegated yellow that in person doesn't show up as it is here, that it's just showing up as a single color, but it's not. And I have now got that far. I almost got the center medallion finished. And I'm hoping by the next time that center medallion will be finished. So on this one, 
I have 13,818 stitches in for 25.7%. Yes, indeed, between on my last video and this video, I actually went into my pattern keeper and dotted the uh, boxes so that I could figure out how far I was. So this was a start at Jacob Palooza. Well, the night before Jacob Palooza, I put in my first full strand so I couldn't screw up the beginning and have to frog it once the whole thing, uh, the event was over. And my last whip, believe it or not. Can you roll that up, please? Thank you, Dee. Everybody knows that I have been stitching my owl. And that right at the moment, I am here trying to get a tummy set of feathers in. You can see I've got my black outlines and all the way down to the bottom. Now I'm using all of the called for floss, flosses and yes, there's a lot of colors in here. This is 400 by 400. It is on a 20 count charcoal. And I've been asked, why did I choose charcoal? So that the black would be black for the letting of the stained glass window. If I had chosen a lighter colored background, it would have just lightened it that little bit and I wanted it to be dramatic. So where are we on this? Oh, by the way, this is Sharova Creations. They are on Etsy and they are delightful to work with. So, I have 76,147 stitches for 47.5. My goal was to reach 50% by the end of March. Not sure that's gonna happen, but I'll still have fun trying. Now, at the beginning of February, I started a challenge with Jen the Caffeinated Stitcher. Oops, I've gotta write that one down where she and Alera are trying to have a stitch that gets 25,000 stitches in 25 weeks. And so I said, hey, I'm in because I want my owl to be done by the end of 2024. So that takes about 16 months to do this. So at the beginning of February, when I started the challenge, I was at 56,904, and I'm now at 76,000. So I've already done 20,000. Isn't that amazing? Because that was only like six weeks ago. Huh. I think I can have this done by the end of the year as long as nothing crazy happens, like I sleep. I have to admit that I have been sleeping more for the last couple of weeks, so it's been interesting because I don't get like 500 stitches in the middle of the night. Those were my whips. Now, if I go to finishes next. This is the most unscripted section because this is what I do. If I have something that I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it or I've inherited it from my, the back of my mother's closet, I cut a pool noodle from the dollar store and I make sure I never get it wet because I don't want to get a lot of crappy stuff on my um, my good sewing. I do have some of them that I actually put into cotton pillowcases so that the cotton pillowcase is against my um, embroidery. So in here, the reason I'm doing this is I want to store these in a way that there are not folds because fabric has memory. And you're going to take a peek at something that I have discovered that I did wrong and I might have a problem with fabric memory. 
So uh, the one thing that I will say to you is like when I'm storing my works that are in progress, I try very hard to never, uh, never fold on the same spot so that I, I'm constantly changing where it's being folded or I roll it. There is a reason that Sarah, the stitching mommy, uses the tubes from wrapping paper and things like that because she can roll up what she's doing and that reduces that creasing. Sarah, stitching mommy, my goodness. So the first thing on this particular roll was an inherit from my mother's cupboard and it is a runner that has this picture on the end of, on both ends. So my thought is I should be able to tiger lily this up and make two project bags out of this. When we had the conversation and, and I even said it to her the last time and she says, do you want this? And I, and I said, I am happy to take this as long as you understand that I will be cutting it up. If you're at peace with that, I will take it. I've ended up with a lot of stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna hand these to you one by one and then you can rewrap the pool noodle when I go on. Okay, so the next one uh, on this, oh my, we are going back in time, people. Oh, back in time indeed. So I'm just amazed at how many little pins I have on what I want to do is to be able to hand Derricka the pool noodle to start this. Okay, so going completely back in time, that means I will not always be able to tell you who the pattern was made by. But this was a Christmas book that had a... Mm, This might even still be available, but it's it's so iconic to have uh, the Bible open in front of candles. So, of course, this is on 14 count Ada because at the time I stitched this, you had a choice of white or accru, off white um, Ada, and that was that was it. So, this was a Bible one that I actually I. I, one of the things that I wanted to bring these out for was to remind myself of what I had and then say, what am I going to do with it? Yes, I've got a whole bunch of pins over here, sweetheart. Um, do you guys remember Precious Moments? They were figurines that were all the go, oh, I'd say in the 1980s maybe. And so um, a pair of designers called Gloria and Pat did many books that took the images of these little figurines and then they would put a saying. Now the figurines would often have a saying. This one says, may your days be merry and bright. So uh, this is a Christmas one as well. That looks like it is on 18 count Ada. Oh, I'd already started going. Okay. Oh, ha <laughs> ha. This actually is a cross stitch by my mother. Back in the day, you would get these big Hirschner's catalogs and Mary Maxim catalogs. And sometimes they would have one or two of the pieces, a slightly bigger picture. And my mother went, huh, I wonder if I can figure out how to do something like that uh, without actually having the pattern. So I don't know what the like this was supposed to have been a kit and it says may this season bring you joyful hours pleasant memories and peace so i will do that up i might make it into a little christmas bag that we can put presents into because it's special um certainly doesn't have the shading that we do these days um there was a book i had that had oriental uh, flowers and settings and this is one of this I think there might have been 
four seasons of this shape. And again, this is going to be 14 count off-white because my parents didn't want white. They thought off-white looked better. Um, I do not know, but it's highly possible that a lot of the things I was picking up were leisure arts books. Yep, my mind is going. What can I make of that? And then the next one I'm going to show you is somewhat showing you what not to do. So back in the day when I was first married and uh, did not have a full studio yet, um, it was expensive to actually go out and purchase all the things for um, my hobbies. And I mean, little did I know what it was going to cost by this point in my life to just buy a thing of DMC. Um, I considered it great when I went to uh, some place and they, I would get four for a Canadian dollar. We would pick up a ton of stuff then. So one of the things I would do is I would go to my local fabric store, which at that point uh, we had one called the Polka Dot Store. And I thought, oh, this is great. Look at this. This is just like Ada cloth. No, it's not. It's thin. It's so did I make I, I, I stitched myself happy and I do always encourage people to make themselves happy. Um, and so that's what I did in doing this. I had a book with these quotes and I did a bunch of these. I'm not sure I know where they all are now. This one is walk on a rainbow trail, walk on a trail of song and all about you will be beauty. There is a way out of every dark mist over a rainbow trail. And this is a Navajo song. So I'm thinking this will become a, some sort of, of bag and that I will have to put something behind it because you can see through this stuff. It's so thin. Now, mind you, I had to be super careful and not carry between my letters very much. So, but that's a what not to do. There are, uh, there are times that you can save money and uh, buying an inferior uh, product to stitch on is not what I consider a logical choice anymore. Oh my. <laughs> so I'm on to um, my second piece of pool noodle. Okay, so again, um, I think I mentioned having books with oriental settings, and yes, this is the right way up. Making, I, you start to wonder, and this was actually light blue 14 count data, which I think I, I picked this to go on it because I was like, this is cool. But then I didn't realize, hey, I'm doing a full coverage. So even back in the day, I was fascinated by full coverage and I do like this. I think it's worthy of doing something with, maybe a flat fold or a stand up. I like it. So I, this is cool. And another oldie, and this was the first time I think I tried stitching on an even weave and I Boy, it looks like 25 count even weave. And this is uh, back, I can't say BC, before children. Um, and this was, I think, a leisure arts pattern that you bought a pamphlet from, it was a, a shop called Lewis Craft here in Canada. And you could get all your DMC. And even when my children were little, I would pick them up all sorts of things just to, to do. Oh, what are those little dots that we iron call? Perlers? Oh, perler beads. Oh, we went through so many of those. We had our windows were covered. Um, so uh, this was just in that time of teddy bears and also in the time of outline everything in 3371. But overall, for how far back this was, 
So I would put this as somewhere around 1986 maybe that I stitched this. The shading in the bears is very lovely. So again, uh, that could be a bell pull. Now if we go even farther back, this I believe definitely was the Leisure Arts um, Animals of the Forest and I did almost every animal and I discovered I had done the bear and never had him framed by my father or anything. Now it might be that I did the bear just to stitch. It wasn't that I loved the design nor fell in love with bears. When I did the cats and the ducks and things like that, that's just something my, my family's interested in. This was purely, I had all the colors I need to stitch. So even way back when, this was therapeutic. And of course, this is 14 count off-white Ada. Now, is there anything else super old? Oh, now we're coming to something more of now. At the beginning of last year, so 2023, I was watching uh, Laura stitching by the shore and she was putting finishing stitches into these this northern scene by two by two stitch art on Etsy. They have many scenes to pick from. This is on 20 count charcoal with one strand. Again, because this was overall a dark picture, I wanted a dark background so that it didn't lighten the effect. And I wanted to try one strand to see if it really had coverage because at that point, um, Laura was having the conversation about, oh, is one thick enough? And if the background isn't going to poke through, I think it is. It sort of depends on what you're stitching. So this was my first two by two stitch art, a Northern Lights. And then this was another two by two on the other half. I think those are snowflakes. And I know I've got another couple patterns. Um, honestly, every so often two by two has a, a sale and I just go in and I grab things because it's they're very reasonable for price, full price. And then when they put 40% off, wow, it's, it's a good buy. So that was two by two stitch art as well. And then the last one here, I feel like I forgot to write down a floss tuber I mentioned. Hmm. We all know this cottage garden sampling had um, a year in the woods and the swans were the first one that I wanted to do. And I did this as a Pele Island start. My husband likes to run the Pele Island half marathon so I took this and I stitched it on the veranda of the vineyards, um, waiting for him to run to me. So I had great fun. And I will say that um, stitching sparked conversation with other people about the crafts they do. This is using all the called for colors, but one strand of DMC on 20 count cornflower Ada fiber on a whim. I do have plans for a lot more of these. And did I drop one? Yeah, it was me. Have you wrapped a fox? I don't think so. Okay, not so far then. My apologies, I'm just trying to share my pins for putting things back together. Okay, and now we're on to my third, and I think the final. On the back. <gasps> ah! And Derica comes to the rescue. The fox is on the back of the swan. And uh, that's the other one that I have done. I've got a very special vision for what I want to do with these. 
but I need to have a lot more stitching done before I start um, creating the book the way I want to. So these, you will continue to see these. Um, I can't figure out whether the bear or the bat is going to be next. And yes, I'm one of these strange people that actually loves bats. Sky puppies. Sky puppies, that's a good one. I haven't heard of them like that. Oh my, okay. So this has lots of stitching in it. And the first one was a Peely Island stitch from a different year. And I am going to have to write across the top who the designer of this is. I have three patterns from this designer. Uh, Drake Warrior Kitties from the same one. I've got that one. But obviously I'm a musician and this is in the shape of a heart. Monochromatic. I thought this is perfect for being on Peely Island. I only have to take one color of thread. And every time I turned around, I've discovered I had wrong counting. So I had to grid this fabric in order to actually do that. So it wasn't as easy a stitch as I thought. It did turn out substantial though. This is a big stitch. Okay, so hang on. This would have been 16 count uh, Ada. And had I gone to 20 count, it might not have been as big. I have not figured out what to do with this yet. Because it would be an awfully big project bag. Mind you, you could put full coverage in it. Hello. It, the suggestions are, if you've got ideas, that's great. Um, this particular stitch was, um, this is on 40 count linen. And it, it, it literally was an experiment to see if I could stitch on 40 count linen. I, it was just one of those, um, when you go on one, two, three stitch, sometimes they've got things that are like eight inches by 10 inches that they're selling for $4. So I will frequently, just before I hit pay, I will check and see if they've got a few of those so I can try out new colors and new sizes. Um, this is a freebie chart from the Fat Quarter Shop, who is also got a wonderful floss tube and many freebies. You can use whatever colors you want and I am not entirely sure what I'm going to do with that. Okay, so the next thing is also Halloween. And I have discovered that Elizabeth of Savory Sewing loves Halloween so much she wants to do a spooky April. So I am going to be doing some Halloween and Christmas throughout um, April. This was an ornament from the Just Cross Stitch ornaments. No, it was not. This is from an old magazine that I can't remember. If I remember, it will be across the top. I will hunt up the magazine because it's, it, it had some cute options in it. Um, Maybe Silver Creek Sampler, uh, because they do the year thing. And that was just a matter of one of the things that was in there. This is a, it's either an ink circle or a long dog sampler. I'm gonna think it's a long dog sampler and it's a long thing with dogs on it. 
and every dog has at least one Quaker on them. So this is where I fell in love with doing the Quakers. And to be honest, I am thinking I'm going to make this into some sort of just tapestry bell pull type thing and give it to my dog groomer who keeps our little Lola looking charming at all times. My next thing is going to also be a what not to do. So I have a vintage aquatic 32 count Lugana. So it is, I'm gonna show you this. So it's a print and it's all mottled. And I got a very beautiful yin yang that is floral lace. And I thought, oh, this is going to be so pretty. I'm going to use variegated thread. And I only used two colors, but because of the mottling and the way the variegated colors come through, I don't think that it does the picture the yin yang justice so I think there's so much as too much variegation when you're putting something on a mottled fabric so I am actually going to redo this one and again I will put the maker of this particular design across the top it is beautiful. It was fun to stitch. It just didn't end up being the effect I would, thought it was going to be. This is a Donna Cooler stocking. Uh, she has a book out of stockings and this is one of them. I have not made it into a stocking yet, but I plan to do that this year. And um, I have been asked to actually sort of have somebody video me as I'm doing it because I have um, some other little stockings I'm planning to do um, in conjunction with a sow with um, the Scotty Stitcher. I think I've got that name right. I'm suddenly going blank, but this, this is beautiful. It was an easy stitch. I, I tend to do the stockings on 14 count because it makes the stocking a logical size for being fillable. Um, yeah, I'm not sure who that one's going to go to. And then this is an, another, this was one of the songbirds that I was telling Amy about. It's Joy. And I do not remember what month this is. Hang on. I've got my book in my hand. Sing for Joy. 32 count Lugano Murano Green. It is Songbird Garden Series number 10, House Finch and Cornflower. Isn't it nice to take a dollar store book and be able to keep track of things? Yes. So because I'm a musician, I really did like this piece, this particular piece in its entirety. And I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that. It would be lovely for in a studio. And one more finish that is not fully finished is this. This is actually a modern folk embroidery. It is, um, it is from the pen, like you can order from Jacob's website and then you've got it sent to you as a PDF. One of the ways I got used to stitching what I thought was going to be an overwhelming designer was I purchased the eight Biscornu and I started stitching those. And 
Some of them I made into Bisgornu and some of them I'm making into other things. I had hoped to get this made into something else for today. It, there's just only 24 hours in a day. Uh, but, so, but he had originally intended the Bisgornu to basically be monochromatic, but he's totally fine with us playing around with color. This is on 32 count antique rose lugana and it has been stitched with one strand of 12 weight sulky. I'm fortunate that I can get a great range of sulky colors at my local needle workshop. Now, as I go into my fully finished ones, oh no, I've got one more. And you guys have been watching me do this. This was instant cross stitch and was a testing for them. They now have the pictures they need and will, I've given them free reign to use it in any advertising or whatnot that they want. So this is Winter Cardinals. And I just think they did an exquisite job of making, like, I'm just continually amazed by the little snow drifts that are in here that give dimension to this snow globe. Now, I did have one person say, that's interesting. It's all males. They've got no little golden females in there. And I'm like, huh, that's true. The, the cardinals do come in pairs. That can just go on that last one, too. And so can this one. Okay, now for my fully finishes and oh my. So I just wanted to show you, first of all, this is one of the things that I can do with those Biscornu by Jacob Folk Embroidery. And I need to write down modern folk embroidery, Jacob Folk Embroidery, that's good. And so all I did was I took basic idea of just putting strips along the side. And then one of the treats that I got from a fellow stitcher was this lanyard here that I've just used for Jacob Palooza 2023, all spelled out to me. And so I used purple. I've done a very basic cross hatch on the back. And in this particular one, is one that I want to stitch soon. Golden Delicious. And yes, I do have the Roxy Floss sitting here. So that's a fully kitted. Well, maybe not. I need the material, don't I? But it will come soon. Okay. And this guy. I just I had so much fun doing this. I realize it's, it's various shades of gray. It was not hard to stitch on. I am a little disappointed that the dots from the background show through the kitten so much. So this is Tomcat by Creation Martin. So the real name is in French. Um, this is a gray 32 count Lugana with dots and all of the call for colors. What I did was this was uh, stitched for the summer cross stitch camp by the Colorado cross stitcher. Uh, in July, it was something with an animal. And so of course, both the cat and the bird are animals. So with this, the Colorado cross stitcher is a wonderful floss tuber that is, has been given, gr giving great advice on color theory just to broaden um, what we know so that we can make good decisions when we want to change things up. But, so this was a lot of fun. Okay, and now I go to, so I'm actually going to do this one next the tiny modernist who we all know and love has often got a yearly sew along going along 
and um, there was one year where it was a Biscor new every month. So when the whole thing was done, I actually purchased the entire year. So I've got lots of Biscor new that I have the opportunity to per to make. But every so often, if I have something done and I have need for something, so this is a Biscor new that's just been made into a little crossbody bag so that if I want to go for a walk with my husband, I actually can put my puffer and allergy pills and my phone in here. And we don't, it, it just makes it easier than carrying a full purse. And we feel safer than not having anything at all along because one never knows when one will need something. So this is a tiny modernist. I'll be the first to say I found an old 14 count. I don't know what color they call this. It might have been a crew. Um, it was really stiff until I got working with it. So it, it was not uh, what is my preference. I do use a hoop. But you, I don't have problems with hoop marks because I take the hoop off even if I'm just sort of leaving to go have supper. I never leave it on overnight. And in that way, the, the um, fabric won't have memory. So Tiny Modernist, if you want to do a Biscornu, please look her up because it's easy to get uh, the PDF of all of that entire year and they are absolutely delightful. Okay, so handing off. Uh, for those of you that remember, I was in a swap through Sandy uh, where the theme was bunny and this was mine. And I managed to get down here without the card sent with me. So I don't know all of the details, but I was spoiled to the hilt by Deb and continue to show that I, I actually have it in my studio right now because I think it makes everybody think of spring and of course perhaps an Easter Bunny. Lovely that I, it came already framed. Deb, you spoiled me. And it came with a fake chocolate bunny that I tried to eat because I thought it wasn't fake. <laughs> and that's right. It came with a fake chocolate bunny that looked so real that Dee tried to Take a bite. My teeth are fine. Teeth are fine. <laughs> Nothing was broken. But yes. Okay, so if we just go along on our Easter way, this fully finish is a hot air balloon bunny. It is a Twin Peaks Privative and is from the 2023 Easter ornaments. They have actually booklets that you can download from Etsy and you get a lot. I realized I think it was my one of my most expensive Etsy purchases but I got like 16 different little bunny pictures and I thought that that value was really good because $30 then is only $2 for each pattern. So this would be on Stormy Night Lugano 32 and I was oh I was stitching primitive. This is one strand on 32 count. That's not bad for coverage because you can't see the back through that. A lot of times I'm just using, when it comes to my ornaments, because this is just a flat ornament, and on this one I just used felt on the back. Um, with ornaments, I will often just go on my own way with regards to colors and just make it work and I leave all of my kitted stuff up so that I don't muck it up. Um, and may I have the next bunny D? Okay. So then this one was a recent finish. And it is again Twin Peaks Primitives, March to Easter. Again from the 2022 Easter Ornaments. Pell stitches, 32 count Lugana, and it is my own choice completely for DMC 2 over 2. This was a very quick stitch. And 
with regards to this, this was actually one of the prompts for Laura Stitching by the Shore for I Spy. She only gives us 10 prompts, so it makes it a little bit more doable. She said, something with stripes. My bubble bee has stripes. And you'll notice I am putting those little 2024. And yes, I have had some of them be on backwards and I have to take them off and put them back on. And I just have a basic cotton on the back. And this is a blanket stitch finish with a beaded hanger. Uh, did I miss any? I'm also for all of these ornaments as I finish them in 2024 I'm taking pictures of these to put on Instagram so that they can be part of the FFO challenge 2024 that Jen of Two Tall Stitchers she had it for 2023 and got so many things fully finished that uh, she went on to do a 2024 and I hope that this is just something permanent so that we're all just invited to send our, our upload as part of this fun thing. Okay, continuing with ornaments, we're now going to do some ornaments that are by Waxing Moon Designs. They are an Etsy designer who, they are fabulous with smalls. These don't take long to do. One of the things, this one I have is from their Autumn Smalls because he's got the turkey for Thanksgiving. Um, so one of the things that I will often do is as I'm talking to people um, or doing Zooms that I don't want to get intricate stitching going, um, I will do these outlines and I'll do them in a variety of colors so that when I need some, an ornament quick, all I have to do is this inner stuff and there's very, very little back stitching to slow you up at the end. Here I put on a little bit. Okay, so this is going to be 32 count Stormy Night Lugana and it is one strand, yes, one strand of thread. And also from the Autumn Littles is the Raccoon with Pumpkin. Same piece of material. And then we have Winter Littles. This was the edge of the Prairie Birds fabric from Pell Stitches. So this is two strands of my own choice. So I decided on two strands on this one. And then I decided that I wanted to add some beads. And I didn't do it around the outside. I did it on the actual stitch this time. And then I took out one of these snowflakes out of the pattern. And I put in the um, hanger of the date. So he's ready for Christmas next year. Although... It doesn't have to be Christmas, but there is a little Santa's hat there. And this is from Christmas Littles by Waxing Moon. I have never shown this before because I didn't care for the, the elf's outfit. I didn't do well with the greens. He looks like he's part of a patchwork quilt gone wrong. So I've had him finished for quite a while fully finished for quite a while, but I'm, I've never wanted to give them away because I'm not happy with the coloring. And then also from the Winter Littles, of course, I had to do an owl, and this was part of my magazine monthly challenge um, that is in January. They, they do 25 prompts for the first 25 days, and Carolyn Zook, is one of the uh, people behind keeping this particular organized event going and getting the prompts put up at the right time. So I had great fun with that, Carolyn. And Carolyn has a birthday on the 22nd, and I believe it's the same day for Darlene Dion, uh, one of our Canadian designers. Oh, and I should write down that I just said that. Okay, so that is the end of Waxing Moon. 
So I'm just going to take a little break to do a couple of stand-ups. This was my first stand-up ever that I did last year, and I just found an old magazine, and I don't even think I have it anymore. And I just did this autumn. It was on one of these hard pieces of Ada. I wasn't intending for it to be anything marvelous. I just wanted to see, could I do a flat fold? And yes, you guessed it. I watched Vonna Pfeiffer to get clues on how to do a flat fold and uh, Helen D as well. They are great. I find that if you have two people present that it just sends to um, snap it into view and you can, you can do a can do. And the other flat fold I have is more recent. It was one of my fully finishes of the last week. In the last week, my goal was to prepare for this and to make more fully finishes. So this is Cottage Garden Samplings Gathering Acorns. It's 25 count pewter even weave with one strand of called for DMC over one thread of fabric. And this is all part, this is part of the FFO challenge. I'll put that one up for the two tall stitchers to see. This was a fabulous um, stitch. I enjoyed it. Now, I'm just gonna show that, so there's that one, so I'm gonna bring it back in just a second. So just before Valentine's Day, I showed you that I was starting something for my mother and I had to just do it pretty darn quick. And it was, again, a tiny modernist freebie. Um, you hold the key to my heart. And I did this one as a flat fold. Now, this one, I have not done anything with the edges and I just used glue in there. And I'm not as happy with just leaving this as this as I am when I actually take the time to put edging on. I know some people use rickrack or mini palms. Yeah, mini palms are a fabulous thing to put around here just to distract from the fact that you've got, you're putting together multiple layers. Um, so I will in the future be blanket stitching. I did contemplate actually sewing some beads or other fall type buttons at the top. We'll see what happens. For now, it's fully finished. And this was my other one, the Tiny Modernist Freebie Key to My Heart. And I'll just remind you that when it comes down to it, if you put free cross stitch patterns, it's amazing how many things come up and particularly Valentine's, they're just all over the place. Um, since I was talking Tiny Modernist, this is also this is a Winter Globe series that she's got. She's got four. And I've got Tiny Modernist down. So this, my one niece loves penguins. So of course I did penguins. This is actually 32 count. No, it's not. This is 25 count pewter and um, I found this to be fairly large, so if I'm going to do the next ones, I'm going to do it on 28 count, one over one. Yes, but this was a fun stitch. Also by the Tiny Modernist, this is a Sparrow. Now, this is a purchased pattern that I got from the Jingle Ball, and I have given away one of these in a send a smile and this is another one that I've got done and I will do the blue, there's a blue jay here but I didn't want to work on two blue jays at the same time. So tiny modernist, again I can just do the outside pattern, this was the winter bird trio and then when I've got time I can fill in the middle those two joys. Now she also had 
these freebies at the Jingle Ball. And actually it's one pattern that I have done twice. The bird is a different color in each one. I, I always try to find something to do a little bit differently. And one was done in 2023 and one was done in 2024. So um, I needed to find uh, something with a word on it for a prompt for my magazine monthly challenge. So I just knew that this worked up really quickly and I was using 32 count Lugana and sulky thread. The birds are a sulky variegated thread. So it's, this was a lot of fun to do and, and easy. Oh, I've got the itchy nose that so many floss tubers talk about. Now, earlier you heard me speak about the Jardin Privé um, stitch along from Brendwork, Brenda the Handwork Maniac and Colette the Highway Stitcher. These are the two that I have fully finished. This one is December and I experimented with adding rickrack on the edge and tacking it down with beads. It's actually quite cute. And this one is January. I love that he's got a Canadian toque on, little red hat with a white pom-pom. So this one, I what I did was I used my blanket stitch originally. I'm trying to show you. So I blanket stitched it. And then after I had that, I added the beads around on the edge because my back was an eighth of an inch bigger than the front. So I could put that around and have no problems with it just sort of sitting. This was the first time I'd done it exactly like this. So I can't tell you whether it's faster or slower than just doing general beading because it's the first time I need to get used to it to see whether it ends up going faster. But those are two fully finished for the Oct to Oct Salle, Jardin Privé Salle, FFO Challenge 2024. Those apply to all of these. Now, this guy, I will be running the designers across the top. This one is from one of the Just Cross Stitch uh, Christmas ornaments. I do not think it was this year. I think it was last year's. And you can see I put an ornamental edge. This edge actually did sew the back to the front, whereas the one that I just showed you, it, the back and front were sewed to, together before I put the beading on. So this was for the prompt, something with transportation. And this is from one of the Just Cross Stitch Christmas magazines for ornaments. Trying to remember, I think it was an animal. And I thought I have kids with cats, so they'll like that. This is another Just Cross Stitch Christmas Ornaments magazine, but I made him into a poofy ornament. I want to do this again and have, instead of putting the beads like this, I, I actually want to do ropes of beads like they're draped around the tree. This one is from a magazine borrowed from my sister-in-law that has been returned. And it is all, and you do a long, I think it's called a humbug, and you do one long stitch, and then the magazine shows you how to fold this up so that you have one seam and this matches that, and then you stuff it. I think it's a very fun way of having an ornament. And of course, I was already experimenting with the beads in 2023.
This particular pattern is by a lovely floss tuber, Lisa Lost in Stitches, who is uh, from Edmonton. And um, I miss seeing regular floss tubes from her. Uh, she has been having a few health battles and I hope that she's winning. So you can see that uh, what I did was I sewed this. So this is stitched completely with sulky threads. Lots of beads for the different stars that she had on here. This is an ornament bright and Lost in Stitches shop is on Etsy and she has other lovely patterns for you to explore. Next ornaments are going to be ornaments that are part of a sew along that the Sunshine Stitchers, oh my word, last week I had such a problem separating out the Sunshine Stitchers and the Sun City Stitchers that I said it wrong and I do apologize because I actually watched them both religiously. I didn't even realize in the moment I was saying it wrong and I do apologize. The Sunshine Stitchers are having a Bake Me a Quaker style where they're using One Dozen Quakers by Rosewood Manor and, and creating a 13 month sew along so that there's an extra month of leeway in there in case life just gets to you. Because I'm sure it will. And now, having said that, some people are already done. When I announced this, I went, ooh, I love doing Quakers. Are you okay with me doing this and sewing along, but making ornaments out of the different Quakers? So this is One Dozen Quakers by Rosewood Manor. And so this is one of the Quakers. And you'll notice that, yes, I beat it up. Sometimes I subtract extra stuff around the outside and sometimes I manage. I add because it's small. So that's one of them. The two new ones that were just finished in the last week are these two. Isn't that gorgeous? So if you ask me what's my favorite color, it's really this jadey green color. And at some point I will bring down a picture of my wedding so that you can see that I had my bridesmaids in that color. So these turned out very well and they do have beading along the sides and that is what holds these together and they have cotton on the backing. Um, I'm going to do this guy. This is a hands-on design, O Canada. I love the fact that Kathy Haberman will provide some options for the Canadians to change July around in the year of celebrations and to have a pamphlet that is just for Canada. So this is stitched with one thread of DMC thread on 20 count charcoal. She had suggested black Lugana. I find charcoal is as dark as my eyes want to go. But this was fun. It was, I started it on a Zoom on Canada Day as a matter of fact. And then somehow it got mislaid and I found it in the bottom of a bag and went, oh, I'm not supposed to put down stuff half done. So, and as we go along with ornaments, we are going to parade. Yeah, I'm gonna need some help with all the, these little pillows. So if you can just hand me them one by one. So as you know, I have been working on the Prairie Bird, Prairie Schoolers, Prairie Birds. What I did was I started, there's 10 of them, yes. Uh, and so I started one each hour of New Year's Eve and then the other two hours I stitched on the owl. And so I'm happy to say that my 
New Year's Eve challenge is complete. They are all pillows, except for one which ended up as a flat. So these are Prairie Schooler birds and Dee is just going to start handing them to me. These are my goldfinches. Bluebirds. Mm. I'm going to go with Wren. I'm not sure. It was a kind of bird that I was like, yeah, I think I've heard of it, but I wasn't sure. These are chickadees. Robins. Cardinals with my own choice of colors. They said this was some sort of bluebird. I can't quite remember precisely. And then the other one that ended up as a flat because I didn't quite do it with the right. Uh, there were some spontaneous changes to the pattern, which resulted in it not being the same size of pillow. So I didn't want to make it into a pillow. I made it into a flat. So this is the hummingbird and I chose my own colors of pink for the flowers because that's how I remember seeing the hummingbirds in that particular kind of cone situation. So I'm happy that I got my New Year's Eve challenge completed. Continuing with ornaments, we're crazy enough going to go to Halloween. So this is a Halloween ornament from the Just Cross Stitch Halloween. Uh, some of these will be from this year and some of them will be from last year. But I will admit that I was lucky enough to find 2020, 21, 22, 23. So I, I've got, I'm going to have a nice selection. So I will look in my notes and pass the designers over top. This was my first attempt at making cording and I tried to make it out of yarn it's interesting in yarn i don't think i'll make it out of yarn again but it is still an ornament nonetheless and then there was a garland that was called jack-o-lantern garden garland and i wanted to do jack-o-lanterns to celebrate laura's birthday she does a pumpkin pumpkin stitch every year because her birthday stays in October every year. So I thought these were really cute. And then, oh yes. I had to take a moment. This is a Doreen Jones silhouette. She's got several groups of four silhouettes that um, are just really fun to stitch. I mean, that bat is just so cute. And, and again, her prices are very reasonable and she still puts things on sale. Now, while I talk about Doreen Jones, I actually did all four out of a different silhouette, but you'll see that I changed one element on each to not be in black. So the spider web and the whiskers. The moon is in white. The leaves were in variegated green. I think that was steamed broccoli. And then here I put the stars in B5200. And on the top, I just took this outside so that there was no right or wrong to which side it was. And I've got a little piece of cardboard in the bottom so it sits flat. I've discovered if I don't put cardboard in the bottom and I stuff it really full, it ends up round. So we need to have cardboard in the bottom. So I have been having an awful lot of fun making 3D ornaments. This is not an ornament, it's a box. And yes, look who's arriving. I'm here, I'm here. Let the banners furl and the flags fly. Hi honey, I'm home. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> 
oh my. And so I still have a, I have a few more three-dimensional. I wanted to show my small from Jacob Palooza. Thank you, Don. This is exquisite stitching. This is a stand-up that I made out of an ornament from the Just Cross Stitch Christmas ornaments, but I just made it into an ornament instead. These are not hard to do. That was an experiment so that I didn't ruin my daughter's stitching. Um, I have done one of Kathy Haberman's, oh, I better write down hands-on design. Uh, so this is Woof. So she has her boxes. So if you're a cat person, she's got cats. She's got a cute one for needles. She's got Christmas, she's got Halloween. It is absolutely adorable and not hard to put together. What happens is you put in a row of stitching and then you just whip stitch that those rows together. It's just back stitches that have been whip stitched together. And then this has just been applique on top. This was fun. Um, Heart and Hand has been very successful with their tiny towns and I have finished two into drums. So I have Blooming Tiny Town, which is spring. Isn't that adorable? And I've got the mini palms around the top and cotton on the bottom. Something hard to make them sit properly. And yes, there's the occasional button and Lazy Daisy because it's possible to actually add a few things in. And this is my Halloween, where I had fun with beads up here. Now, when I do these, I do them on a 32 count and I always use my own conversion to Selkie. I find they stitch up so quickly. If I didn't have as many whips, works in progress as I do now, um, when I only was working on three things, these could be stitched in a week. We'll see how long it takes this time. To finish off ornaments, I do have two Mill Hill ornaments here. This is out of the Gnome Home series. This was the Bee Gnome. And then everybody sort of watched me do this one this past December which was joy in the shape of a dog paw because that's, yep, we've got our Lola. And years ago, I did this ornament for my mother and I know it was a kit. I do think it was a Mill Hill kit. I would say this was in the 1990s. but we're going through closets and we're finding things that made me realize I didn't bring everything down. So while I'm doing some of this, could you check the floor of the little room and see if there's a bag with more framed cross stitches in it? So, yes. So I, I really love this. Lots of beading on there. And one of my um, hopes for this summer is to get back at doing hard anger. There was a period of time where I was starting to do it. I just didn't do it with large things. So for instance, this is a small thing that I did in Hardanger. And I did a cross for my mother. But I have noticed that in the older uh, Just Cross Stitch Christmas, there's always two or three Hardangers and they're so gorgeous that I wanna get back at this. And one of the parents of a past student of mine 
used to do Hardanger while she was waiting for her child. So just might call and see whether I could strike up that friendship and maybe find somebody to stitch with. Now at this point, I'm just going to say I have been doing the ATC card swaps with Laura Stitching by the Shore. So this was Autumn. And that is, thank you, Deb. Yes, the same Deb that um, gave me my bunny, Small World. And thank you, Ellen. And then Winter, thank you, Gail. And my other Winter, thank you, Sherry. So because I send in two cards, I get two cards back. I think the next one might be a summer type theme, so I'll need to get going on that because I do enjoy it. And now, yes, Derica, that one you're not worth it. That's, I got it for the stitched. I got that for the frame, not for the picture. Um, I just wanted to show you uh, one other option for hoops. So this is just that normal hoop that we use for cross stitch. This is one of the doilies that my grandmother made. And I wanted to actually have it put on the wall. So I don't know if you can see that I used beads along this. So little ones here and bigger ones here in order to fasten it to just a piece of cotton and then I used just felt on the back. So some of these little pieces of your grandmother's, they have potential. Now I was wondering about making uh, project bags, but I, I don't want them to be rubbed. So that's going to be a no, but my grandmother uh, crocheted with doily that was the number 30 weight crochet cotton which means that it was essentially like the thread that I sew with on a sewing machine and I need to figure out what to do with lots of these because we've got lots of these and now going back to some of the things of the past I do not know I have no clue where this pattern came from I remember that it was like a Dover book that would just not stay open. It was an annoying book. And this is the Four Seasons, but beyond that, it's been hanging at my parents. And then after she ended up with lots of people, even my niece giving her things to hang, this ended up in a closet. So I said, no, I'll take that back. So the, the back of it is just a bell pull. And those are bell pull ends. But you can see that we've come a long way in the detail, like I'm gonna, because there really isn't that much detail in each of these. But as a totality, I like to see where it's going. I would have probably been 15 or so when I did that. And, okay. So earlier I talked to you about Gloria and Pat. I'm pretty sure this was a Gloria and Pat design. Um, they do not design anymore, but they were the main designers for a number of years uh, at the time that Told in the Garden was very popular. And they did these little forest creatures that you, you just wanted to tickle their little toes. My, my one son calls these toe beans and that you want to tickle them. But it's adorable, and uh, look at that. It was framed at the Framing Experience August 9th of 1995 with my father. So uh, the Framing Experience was a place where you would pick things out, and then they would cut all of this stuff up, but they didn't assemble the frame. They taught you how to do it. And so my father and I would, would sometimes do that type of thing. This one wasn't a matter of nailing things together. It, it was just using the corners 
This was one I stitched to be in my children's bedroom when they were babies. I want a hug. Bedtime is hug time. All about the hugs. So you can see that there was still a fair amount of outlining going on. I believe this to be a 36 count even weave. It's what it looks like, but I don't remember. This, this, the parent of this teacher that I'm telling you about, she, ha she knew someone who sold material out of her house for stitchers. And I think I was able to get like a half a yard of things that you couldn't get very easily other places. And even back in the day, I did owls. Now this is where I'm in trouble because this has had something else leaning against it. It has not been on the wall. And that means that my fabric has memory of this spot that has been leaned against. I believe this was a part of a leisure arts book of forest animals, but I need to actually get these out of my closet and hang them so that they don't end up permanently with trouble. Okay, there should be another one that goes with this. Okay, back in the day, the seasons were all the thing. So this was autumn and this was spring. And I would do these, like I did these several times because I would do this pair like this and give it to my friends when they got married. And my father would help me frame these at the framing experience. These are definitely like wowzer, 14 count. Not much details again, but I love that I have these and that they are out of my mother's uh, closet. Now, while I was in my mother's closet, um, I found this piece. My sister did this. This is actually a form of rug hooking. Um, the trillium is a uh, province's flower and it happens to be something that we go tri trillium hunting in the spring. My father enjoyed the hunt and so my sister and I continue this. And this is my father's brain. So um, at Christmas, which just happened last week with my one son, um, I got him some punch needle and this morning he already sent me the picture of something that he has been working on. My apologies for this sound. They didn't know if you me to do that or not. Using the same frame, my father did one for me. Now, again, if we look at the birds of the day, the details in the birds were not... The details are not there, but when they're at back a bit, it's fine. And quite honestly, my father framed this for me. I'm happy to have it again. And this is the alphabet that I did for our nursery. And it was on that same uh, even weave that we just talked about getting from a friend. And you can see that there's been something that has been leaning against this spot here. So I, I don't have need for a nursery right now. And as such, um, it has been in a closet, but I, I'm going to start putting these things up. Um, my father loved barns uh, and barn boards and, and taking old things and making them into 
a usable frame. So this was one that my father framed for me and the book this came out of had, had all, was all about ducks. But this one was uh, the mill picture. And you know, dad did this on his own and it's 18 count Ada. Oh, it's Fiddler's Cloth. So it's, it's Ada Fiddler's Cloth. Is this the last one? Oh my goodness, it's the last one. And this is one of my pride and joys. I wish I could tell you the designer. This has a story to it. The parent of that student I was speaking of purchased this pattern and I was very pregnant. And I said, oh, I love that. But it was like multiple pages long and I'd never seen a multiple page long pattern before. So she said, oh, borrow it. If it takes you a couple years, don't worry about it. So two weeks before, well, four weeks before I was due, I thought, I'm going to start this. I have fewer students right now. I've got my senior students teaching my students. I'll have loads of time because I'm a fast stitcher. So I, I gave myself a month to do this. A month! And there's Krynik, all these different colors of Krynik in it. You can see it in the peacock. And partial stitches, and oh my word. And my baby came two weeks early. This did not get done <laughs> before she arrived. I would say it took about two years before it was finished. But I am very proud of this. I have not taken everything off of my walls to show you. I literally went through my closets to find the things that were not up. And I will uh, bring out some of the things that have been up as we go along. One moment, I forgot to add in the answer to a question that I posed to Linny of the Sable Stitchers. And I promised her I'd give her the answer on my next video and I forgot to put it in. So the question was, why do bunnies have shiny noses? As we know, Linny is great at telling jokes and riddles during the Sable Stitchers, so I thought I'd give her one. And the answer is, the reason they have shiny noses, the powder puffs on the wrong end. I hope everybody has a wonderful family weekend at Easter. Thank you so much for joining me for my first whip and finish parade. And thank you to Derica for helping with all the organization and for what will happen after, which is cleaning this up and doing the editing and all the rest of that stuff. I can't do any of this without Derica. I still did record a piece of music. Today was about finding old favorites. So I thought that I would record for you a piece that is officially the most requested piece in Karen's life. Fear Elise by Beethoven. Fear Elise just means for Elise. And yes, there are hypotheses about how, who Elise was. Nobody knows what Beethoven's feelings for Elise were. Was she purely a student? Was she not a student at all? Like what? We don't know that much about that part of it. When it comes to pieces that are iconic like this, there are many different ways to interpret these pieces. Beethoven is known as being one of the classical greats. And yet his years are 1717 to 1828, which means that a chunk of his best composing years was during the time where the world was transitioning in the arts from classicism to romanticism. And we hear it in Beethoven's music frequently. So 
there are interpretations of Furelis that are quite classical and fairly metronomic, and there are presentations that are more romantic and looser. I fall in the latter category. I do play this a little bit romantic, and I hope that you will enjoy the playing of Furelis. Thank you. I hope that there were some pieces in here that you went, ooh, that's really cool. And that you had a good time stitching while you were listening to me. I will provide as much information as I can. Some of the older pieces, I will not be able to provide the information for the patterns, nor do I still have the patterns when I was busy with three children and running out of space in the house. I stopped cross-stitching for a while. Derek, do you remember me cross-stitching way back when? Not really, yeah. See, you were quite young when I stopped it. I had three kids in less than four years. And it made me busy and my husband was right in requesting that no needles or pins be dropped. Yeah, yes. the only thing I remember was like the, the big plastic red yarn you were teaching Bailey how to do stuff with. Oh yes, I did teach my, my daughter how to cross stitch with yarn, it's true. So um, I erroneously gave away all my DMC and all of my patterns, so I have none of them. Which is why I have such a hard time telling you everything that I wish I could tell you. But thank you for being here on my walk through memory lane. I hope that you had the ability to make something beautiful as I was chatting and that in the making, you made yourself happy. Please join me again on the first Sunday of April. That will be my next video. And we will be back to normal schedule at that point. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.